All right, so I wanted to talk a little bit about why I try to avoid the this keyword whenever I'm using JavaScript. And I actually just ran into this issue. Like you think I've been, I've been coding with JavaScript for so long, you think I'd actually understand like the proper way of this, but sometimes you just forget about this and this is not set to what you think it should be. So as an example, let's just make a simple class. I'll say like class of car and that could have a constructor on it. And I'll say like this dot speed is equal to five, right? So everyone should hopefully know what a class constructor is in JavaScript. And then you might have some methods on this, such as like speed up. This is just a really basic dumb example, but like you could plus equal the speed by one. So increase the speed. So when you're dealing with classes, the this is going to refer to like the, the instance of the class when you instantiate a new class, right? So if I go over here and I say like const, um, I don't know, blue car is equal to new car. It would help if I call this car, not card. So anytime you call a method on this thing, it's going to bind the this to the actual like instance here. So like if I do blue car dot, then whatever I call here, the this of that invocation is going to point to blue car. So if I say speed up here and I go ahead and just say console log blue car dot speed. And let's just run this. All right, so if I just run this, like you'll see that it prints out speed of six, which is, it makes sense, right? Because we constructed a new car instance, we set it to five, and then we called speed up and the speed incre incremented by one, right? So I want to show you something like really tripped me up the other day. Um, and it's just one of those things is like, I should have known this, but for some reason, it's just, this is so confusing, especially for people who are actually like more advanced in JavaScript. You know, maybe I'm not advanced, maybe I'm just like intermediate, but I think I would have known this by now. But basically, if I were to do the same thing, but if I were to destruct this, so like we have a blue car here and we know that it has a speed up method. So if I were to do like const speed up equals blue car, you would think that like this would still work the same way. But in fact, if I were to call this method here, I believe it's just going to throw an exception, right? So the issue is that since you are destructuring this, when you call this method, this method doesn't have this bound to anything. It's just a method by itself, right? You actually need the thing over here. The, the execution context is kind of like what determines how this is bound. And someone could probably explain this much better than me because I honestly ha haven't fully grasped it. And this is one of the reasons why I just try to avoid this at all costs because it's like, there's so much cognitive load of understanding how this works and when it does a certain thing. So like you have to use blue car here or another approach is you could simply say speed up and I could say bind a uh, blue car like this. And I'll say like speed up bound. How about that? So you might see this sometimes in React, like if you're using like the class components of React where you have to like bind your callback functions to this. Uh, it's just kind of strange. But if I were to then call speed up bound and then print out the blue car, that's going to work perfectly fine. Because I'm saying I have this method. It's not bound to anything, right? And I'm going to just go ahead and bind it. I get a new function right here and I can call that function. And now this will be bound to the blue car. Super confusing, right? I think, I think it's confusing. I don't know if you think it's confusing, but then there's like different things that you can do to like, make sure that the, this is bound in different ways. Like if I set it slow down and then I have this actually equal to a fat arrow, which, you know, maybe I can't even do, let me, let me go ahead and do this. Let's say in here I said this dot slow and down is a fat arrow. The fat arrow is basically gonna, basically gonna say that whenever you call this method, it's automatically gonna bind to this over here. So I, I'm, I'm gonna try this out. I think this will work. Um, this dot speed minus equals one. And I'm gonna try the same thing except for I'm gonna do slow down here. I'm gonna go ahead and just call slow down. And let's see what happens. So, an interesting thing happens. The, it actually works because when I destruct blue car, this function was actually set up in such a way that it did a, I'm sorry, I keep saying the fat arrow. People get mad when I say that. I'm used to CoffeeScript. And when you're using CoffeeScript, there's actually two types of arrows. There's a fat arrow and there's a skinny arrow. And I use CoffeeScript for like a while. And for some reason, that's the first thing I ever learned about like this arrow notation. So when I say the fat arrow, like I actually mean the arrow function. I apologize for that. I know it makes some people mad when I say terms that aren't like legit terms. But when you use the arrow function, 
what this is doing is it's saying like whenever someone calls this function, like I'm automatically going to basically do this. I believe this is what kind of happens under the hood. Like if I said um, this dot slow down is equal to, um, I think I might just be able to do this. I so it's like a function dot speed minus equals, you know, I could just do minus minus. So I'm going to do minus, minus equals. But I could also just bind directly here, right? I believe this is the same thing as doing this this arrow function, right? Same thing. Let me just go ahead and make it all kind of the same type of logic. So if I were to comment this out and run the same code, I believe it should still work the same way. And it does. It prints out four. So this is like the equivalent of this, I believe. And this is just a better way to do it because it's a lot cleaner. So this is why we don't do it. But I guess the point of my video is like, whenever I see a library or a framework that's using classes or that's using the this keyword, I just kind of have red flags go off because I've been bitten so many times with this because like you don't know what this is actually going to be set to when you call it. Unless you like really take a moment to stop and think about it. And that extra 10 seconds, 20 seconds of like thinking about how this is like bound and you know, how this all works. It's really just, um, really just confusing like I think you can also like make an object here if I just made an object and I gave it like an age of 10 I said like birthday is a function that's going to say this dot age plus plus and then again I can console log the object here I can say object birthday I think if I run this like it'll it'll increment the age right so this is another instance of this if you have object here when you call this function this is like automatically going to be bound to whatever the the dot notation that you're doing and again if i were to make this like a, a, a an arrow function this would be bound to like the global scope of the entire file so like this won't even work this won't increment your age at all and in fact i think if i were to console log this here it would be like global or just be an object i don't know i don't know how it works in node i think it might be the window when you're using like javascript in the browser but leave a comment if you actually um understand this and stuff and then it's even more confusing like let's say we had like an index file i'm gonna say like index index.html okay there's already one here uh other.html go ahead and make an html file i'll put a script here uh, let's put a function i'll put a script and then inside this i'll say function print how about that and i'll just do like a console log and i will just go ahead and print out what this is. So if I have a button here inside this page that says click me and I go ahead and say like click is equal to print. Uh, I think I'll do it like that. <clears throat> what is this actually bound to? Who actually knows? I have this defined and then this will run with the body. Oh, I put the button in the header like I'm dumb. Okay, let me put it here. Does that make a difference? It does not. Is it called on click? Okay, there we go. I don't even, I, I've been coding in React for so long that I don't even remember like what the actual real things you should be using for event listeners. So if you use a normal HTML event listener, the on click property, you tell it to invoke a function, the this that prints out here is window. Okay, so that's, you know, pretty confusing. But I mean, like, also, also, I believe you have access to like some weird event here. And you can print out E, right? And you can actually get like the event of what was clicked. But actually, if we were to do this, if I were to print out this here and pass this in as like arg in console log arg, I believe this will be the actual button. Yeah, so it prints out the button. So you get what I mean? Like the this in this context here is actually pointing to the button DOM element. And you can pass it to your function and you can do something with that element. But without it, like it just points to the window. So it's, there's just a lot of overhead with this keyword. And that's kind of the whole point of this video. I just want to kind of complain about it and just kind of walk you through why I think a lot of people choose to not touch code that has this. Because sometimes when you have functions that are nested in functions that are nested in more functions, and then like you have to use the arrow function to like make sure your this is bound correctly, stuff just gets out of hand really quick. And then sometimes you want to pass functions around because of how like J JavaScript allows you to quickly 
do higher order functions, you can actually pass a function around that's like wasn't bound correctly. And then when you call it, it just doesn't do what you think it's going to do. So moral of the story is like, just write functional programming, just write functional code, try to avoid that this keyword whenever you can. And any libraries or frameworks that use this keyword, I'm very worried about using them. I think Vue might use them or Vue 2 used to use that this keyword everywhere. And it's just like, just a big red flag to me. Anyway, if you want to kind of leave a comment and tell me that I just need to learn how to use this, feel free to. But if you want to join me Discord and talk to me directly or talk to other people who are trying to learn how to code and ask questions, feel free to join me Discord. I believe the link is in the description below. Um, we'd be welcome to have you and answer any questions you might have that you might be stuck on. Anyway, I hope this helped a little bit. Have a good day and happy coding.